beyond the reason you gave me your life you're all for me you call me yours forever caught in the mercy fall out i found hope found life found all i need you're all i need found love i found love beyond the reason you gave me your life, you're all for me. You called me yours forever. Caught in the mercy fall out. Found hope, found life, found all I need. You're all I need. The time has come. The time has come to stay for all we believe in. So I for what I'm going to give my praise to you Today, today, today is all or nothing All the way, the praise goes out to you All the praise goes out to you And today, today I live for one thing Give you praise in everything I do yeah, all the praise goes out to you. Found love, found love beyond the reason. You gave me your life, you're all for me. You called me yours forever. Caught in the mercy for out. Found hope, found life, found all I need. You're all I need. Stay for all we believe To I for what I'm gonna give my praise to you Today, today, today it's all or nothing All the way, the praise goes out to you Yeah, all the praise goes out to you Today, today I live for one thing Give you praise in everything I do. And all the praise goes out to you. Found love. Found love beyond the reason. You gave your life, you're all for me. Call me yours forever. Caught in. The mercy fall out, found hope, found life, found all I need. You're all I need. The time has come, the time has come to stay for all we believe in. So I for what I'm gonna give my praise to you. Today, today, today is all or nothing. All the way, the praise goes out to you. Yeah, all the praise goes out to you. Today, 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 I live for one thing. Give you praise in everything I do. Yeah, all the praise goes out to you. Oh, we are. Oh, we are is yours. Oh, we're living for. It's all you are. So that you are, oh, we are is yours. Oh, we're living for is all you are, is all that you are. Oh, oh, we're living for, oh, we're living for is all you are, is all that you are. Oh, we are. The praise goes out to you. All the praise goes out to you. And today, today, I live for one thing. Give you praise in everything I do. 
Yeah, all the praise goes out to you today. From today to day, it's all or nothing. All the way, praise goes out to you. Yeah, all the praise goes out to you. Today to day, I live for one thing. Give you praise in everything I do. Yeah, all the praise goes out to you. Dance, 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 dance in the river. Dance, 
everybody and if we go to the left, we go to the left, if we go to the right, go to the right, we're gonna shout! Here we go! And if we go to the left, go to the left, and if we go to the right, we're going to the right, we're gonna jump, 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 jump in the river. Jump, jump, everybody, and if we go to the left, go to the left, and if we go to the right, go to the right, we're gonna dance, 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 dance in the river, dance, dance, everybody, and if we go to the left, go to the left, and if we go to the right, go to the right, we're gonna shout, in the river, everybody, and if he goes. We're going to the left, and it goes to the right. Go to the right, we're going to jump in the river. Everybody, and it goes to the left. Go to the left, and then we go to the right. We're going to the right, we're going to dance. Everybody, and it goes to the left. Go to the left, and then we go to the right. Go to the Cause we're stirring up deep wells, stirring up deep, deep wells, stirring up deep, deep waters. We're gonna dance in the river, dance in the river, stirring up deep, deep wells, stirring up deep, deep waters. We're gonna jump in the river.
kingdom comes Through you the battles won Through you I'm not afraid Through you the price is paid Through you there's victory Thirty-nine years, I've been free. Some of you out there, I know, struggle. And you're struggling, whether it's you're, you're you're still bound up, you're still in prison, whether it's drugs, whether it's finances, whether it's hurts from yesterday's hurts. You are still bound up. And there's a song like this. If you'll just allow yourself. To allow this song to get into your heart and into your spirit. I'm sitting over here crying my eyes out. And I've been free for 39 years. And it still touches me. That God came into a little park in Baltimore City and heard a cry that I needed help. And he has set me free to tell other people. And I... I let me tell you, talk is cheap, church. It's cheap to go up and tell somebody how much God loves them. It don't cost you anything to tell somebody. But when you live it, and you worship like it, and you walk this walk, it's a little costly from time to time. It's even costly that you might just get in undignified, and somebody might see you doing a little Pentecostal hand raise or something. It might cost you a little something for somebody to see that you're really free. What did it cost Jesus when they nailed him to the tree? When they stripped him of all of his dignity and left him hanging naked and they whipped him unmercifully. And he pulled his hair out from his face and other parts of his body. What did it cost Jesus to set you free? When you don't act free, 
you're driving another nail in that tree. I'm going to ask you today just to get free. If you're born again and God has delivered you from you, just get free. Do something you don't normally do and let God know that you are free. I am free. Come on, Brother Tom. through the drums. He 
is prophesying through the drums and he is breaking off chains. He's breaking off shackles. He's breaking off sin. He's breaking off shame. He's breaking off disease. He's breaking off pain. So just as the drums prophesy, Pastor Caleb, I know it's your heart. You're probably tired, but prophesy again. Prophesy again. Prophesy again. to me, he who the Son has set free is truly free indeed. Has he set you free? He said he set you free. So you are free. Free from disease, free from sickness, free from poverty, free from the chains that hold you back. He has already done it. He has set you free. Rejoice in the freedom that he's given you. sitting over there and hear everybody prophesying and drums prophesying and Marcy and all interpreting what the drums were saying and so was you. That was an interpretation of what the drums were trying to tell you. King, I, I got a vision of King David bringing the Ark of the Covenant back into Israel. I just got a vision of that come. How many years was that out of Israel? Anybody know, remember, was it 60 years or whatever years? How many ever years that the, the Ark of the Covenant was out of Israel? And they were bringing it back in. And here he is. He's the king of all of Israel. He's the uh, Obama <laughs> of all of Israel. But all of a sudden, as David was doing it, he realized he just wasn't bringing a religious artifact back into Israel. But the reality hit him of something I don't believe it's hitting you. He was bringing the presence of the living God back to a nation that has lost it. Church, it's our job to bring back the presence of a living God to a nation that is slowly trying to throw it away. And if we don't get a little bit excited about it, if we just think we're going to pick this thing up on our shoulders and walk around with our same plum, prune-looking, lemon-sucking faces and not show a little bit of excitement that we have the presence of the living God. David danced so hard that his wife rebuked him and said, you're making a fool of yourself. And David just went, Baby, That's it. Come on. you ain't seen nothing yet. Come on. Come on. 
one more time. He's going to sing. We're going to sing another song. We're going to change songs here about how great your God is. And as you do, let it get into your heart. And just remember, you care. It isn't on your shoulders anymore. The Ark of the Covenant is in your heart. And you carry the presence of the living God. The splendor of a king, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light. In darkness tries to hide And trembles at his voice Trembles at his voice The splendor The splendor of the king The Lord, the majesty Let all the earth rejoice He wraps himself in light In darkness tries to hide It trembles at his voice It trembles at his voice How great Oh, he's your 
Testify, testify. You better have a testimony or God will give you a test. Come on. church. You guys can be seated up here too, please. Get that out away from me, please. It's just oil. I'm only an oil spill. Huh? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How great thou art. You alright? You alive back there? <laughs> How great. You all find your seats, please. It's already a little late, and I do have a message. I want to preach to the church here a little bit and testify a little bit and do all the things we're supposed to do in the house of God. Amen. How great thou art. If you all don't sit down, I'm going to start singing a solo here. How great thou art. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Come on, church. Just have a seat. We'll, we'll fellowship after church. Amen? Amen. Business, business, church, business can wait at the church. Your business can wait at the church. This is God's time. Somebody say amen. amen. All right. Welcome, visitors. Can I have the visitors wave at me real quick? Hallelujah. And I forgot your name that quick. What was your name again? Let's give Carol a great big God bless you and thank you for coming here. The last couple of weeks we've been behaving ourselves. This is as free as we've got so far. Am I, am I right? We ain't been this wild yet, have we, since you've been here. But how many people know you're supposed to worship God with everything that's in you? Come on. If you can't give him your all, what makes you think he should give you it all? Come on. I believe sowing and reaping is the greatest principle in the world, not just the kingdom, but of the world. Amen? I believe what you sow, you reap. I mean, people know you get a little bit excited about God. Maybe God will get a little bit excited about you. Come on. I don't know about you guys, but I'd rather have God excited about me and then wanting to spank me. Come on. I used to like it when my, my natural father was happy with me because I didn't want him to spank me. I mean, people know I want the spiritual daddy to be happy with me too. Come on. You, I, may, I may have been spanked by God. Yeah, it, feels, it hurts a little bit more than it does, too, doesn't it? That, there will be a leadership class tonight. I understand that the excess youth is going to have a firing contest tonight. Uh, 
It's going to be a little bonfire and some hot dogs and marshmallows and, and all that cooking. I don't want any accidents going on. You, you all don't behave yourself. Pastor Caleb and uh, Robert and all them will, won't allow you near the... You have to go inside and watch everybody else. Youth, did you hear me? Let me say it again. If you do not behave yourself, they got my directive to tell you to get away from the fire. I do not want to hear there were any accidents because of your misbehaving. All the adults said amen. Can I have a couple of the youth say amen? That was some of the older youth who said that too. So, Seriously, be careful, guys. Don't be stupid. I don't allow any open flames during weddings anymore because I've seen things happen that don't need to happen. And, and I've seen accidents. It only takes a little bit of accident, and, and then, you're, then it's terrible. So I trust that my leadership won't leave the fire unattended at any time. Thank you. That was, a tr that was, a, that was more of a commandment than a trust. Amen. Uh, there will also be a hose and fire extinguisher. All right, good. Church decorating. We're going to decorate the church next Sunday after service. Right here, we're going to put our Christmas stuff, get ready for the holidays. This, by the way, is not the way our sanctuary normally looks. I feel like I'm in a cave up here. Uh, we're getting ready for our Christmas bazaar party, our, our, I mean our, our, our katata that we do. We do a major Christmas production here every year. It's a six-scene set change that we do here. It's called... Uh, on heaven's wings, a child is born. I understand that the, uh, what, what's the name, what's that place called? The Holy Land Experience stole our idea from us, amen. And they're, and they're producing a, a, what it's like, what child Christ's birth was on a heaven's, heaven's point of view. That's exactly what our, our play is about. Heaven's birth from the angel's point of view. So, uh, or, or Jesus' birth from the angel's point of view, so. Please mark your calendars. That would be December the 13th, my bride's birthday. Amen. December the 14th and December the 15th. Friday night to Marcy, 730. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Where? Are you? 730 on Friday night because that way you get everybody a chance to get home from work. Saturday, I don't care. What do you guys think at 6 o'clock Saturday evening? To Marcy, does that sound good? Six Saturday. Seven thirty and six. She's got question marks here. That's the reason I she she types my announcement slip. So in case you ever see me fumble up here, it ain't my fault. It's the Marcy's. Okay, amen. Never my fault. I learned that. Being the head, you don't have to take the blame. You can blame somebody else for it. Amen. Even if you're wrong. No, I'm kidding. It is six o'clock on Saturday. Oh, see, I, I timed it right then. And Sunday is our regular church time, and we have a big meal afterwards. Uh, we, 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 we ask everybody, there'll be a sign-up sheet in the back today. My wife has it with her to sign up for what you're going to bring, and ch my church is going to supply water and bread and uh, meat, right? Well, uh, not water, but drinks and all the paper products. We need you to bring side dishes. And we're going to have ham and, and turkey this year. We're doing away with the chicken because it costs too much money. And I made people know our budget's a little tighter right now. Amen. The way the economy hits, it's hit our budget. Matter of fact, I need a great offering today. Let somebody speak to you between today or Thursday. We need about uh, $2,800, $2,900 to come in just to pay bills. So we need you to be uh, ask God what, what you're supposed to give towards that. Amen. How many people? I know every dime of it's here. God's going to talk to you what to give. Don't give, and don't try to give more than what God tells you to give, and then come and ask me for it back later. Amen. I'm going to hurry up and spend it. Amen. <laughs> don't forget the brunch. There is a sign-up sheet. It, got, it, it will take care of it, and we'll make sure we have enough side dishes. We always do, saints. We always have enough food. And, Somebody makes that. Somebody makes an awful good uh, sweet potato casserole. I don't know who it is, but whoever makes it every year, bring it again. Amen. <laughs> and it says, "It is literally true as thankless say that they have nothing to be thankful for." 
He who sits by the fire, thankless, thankless for fire, is just as if he had no fire. Nothing is possessed, saved in appreciation of which thankfulness is the indispensable ingredient. But a thankful heart have a continuous feast. W.J. Cameron wrote that. Happy Thanksgiving and blessings. Amen. That was, that was somebody else's thing. Saints, make sure you're, you, you spend Thanksgiving. How many people know there's two holidays, I believe, or actually three holidays, Christians should celebrate every moment they're away. The first one is Christmas or Thanksgiving. You should be thankful every day that you, God woke you up. Thankful you got breath. Thankful he's going to supply food. Might not be the kind of food you want, but but thankful you got your bellies aren't empty. Amen. If your bellies are empty in this house because it's because you're not friendly and you didn't come ask. We're always eating around here. We're always eating around here. There's always I tried to slide all the way over to Sister K. I'll get it. I'll get it, brother. I'll do it there. And, and, this, and the next thing is Christmas. I believe Christmas should be every day in our hearts. Thankful that Jesus Christ was born for it. But one of the most important ones, I believe, is Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Amen. We should live a resurrected life every moment. If you'll learn to be dead to yourself and let Christ be resurrected through you every moment of your life, the songs we just sang will become real to you. They'll become real to you. If you'll learn to live your life that way, believing God is going to bring resurrection power through you. I don't fear death at all. I don't want it. I'm in no hurry for it. But I don't fear it at all. Because I know to be absent from body is to be. And I know it without a doubt that I'll be with the Lord. I just, I, I know my life. I know the way I've lived my life. These last 39 years, and I've tried to live it as good. I, I'm on, I, I gotta repent like everybody else does. But I try to live my life as godly as I know how to do it. And what I've learned, what I'm learning to do, is to stay in His presence. Amen. So you'll learn to live your life that way. You'll be grateful. Somebody say Amen. amen. All right, let's all rise together, and let's get ready to take up, take up a Holy Ghost offering. Come on, what do you think, saints? If, you, if this is not your church, your tithe does not go here. Your pastor relies on your tithe to pay his bills with. Don't, don't put that 10% in this offering and cause me to be cursed by your tithe that goes to your pastor. If you're a member of this church and you aren't tithing, God's going to reveal it to you because my job, according to the story of Achan, is to crush you with rocks. Amen? If you're not tithing. But those of you that are visiting, any part of your 90% or all of it will be more than glad to take, amen? But your 10% goes to your pastor. Let's lift our blessings up to the Lord. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give. Pour out upon your people, Father, a blessing. God, as we give and we give hilariously into the house of the Lord, now we thank you and we give you the glory, the praise, and the honor. And all God's people said, Amen. Bring your tithe up and you throw it in the offering envelope. We don't take it around here. We bring it. And you bless it. Amen. It's your job to bless it. The children are to be released for junior church at this point time and classes and, and all that stuff. Uh, uh, At the end of service, if anybody's going away for Thanksgiving, we'd like you to come forward. We believe in praying pe for people when they go, when they go to travel. So at the end of service, when I make the altar call, and if anybody's going to be traveling out of town and all that, we want to pray you. I believe, I believe the Bible said we should send people out, even on vacation. Because even at that point, if we send you out, I believe you're on a mission from God. Amen. You think the Blues Brothers are the only one that had a mission from God. Amen. We all do. So God wants to send you out as a blessing. Amen. I believe that, saints. Uh, I've seen this done over and over in my life. 
And I've done it for everyone here. When you go on vacation, just lay hands on you and send you out. And I believe it's important. So at the end of service today, we'll pray for anybody. I know Lynn's traveling. Anybody else that's going out of town? Or, or I know Tim and Christian are just going up to Tallahassee. But sometimes by being with your family, you need to pray more than you do <laughs> traveling on the, hot, on the road. <laughs> Amen. So, you guys are traveling too? Well, that's right. Well, I ain't praying. I ain't praying for you. I'm afraid uh, yeah. you're going on a cruise. I don't know about that one. I will. I'm teasing her, of course. Oh, God bless you, Douglas. <laughs> I meant that well. I really did. God bless you, Jess. Such a wonderful wife. <laughs> oh, saints, I want to talk to you a little bit today. We've been preaching kind of a theme here. I've been talking a lot about what's going on in the world. I think it's important. I really think God put a burden in my heart for it to talk about truth. Can we turn these spotlights off of my eyes, please? Uh, I, I don't think I need them, especially these two. That one over there, I don't even leave one. It'll throw enough light. But these two, spotlight off Elvis. Here it goes. One more. Wrong one. Ah. Now, I, I, but the worst part is I just looked at it. So, But anyhow, we've been talking a lot about the things that the world's going on in the world. And I think it's important because I really think it has a lot to do with God waking the church up right now. I really believe God's trying to shake the church a little bit. And wake the church up. How many people know we we could the church literally is supposed to rule and reign? You know that, right? He told you to multiply. It doesn't necessarily mean in the natural. Boy, thank God, my multiplication days are gone. Amen. I'm supposed to multiply now in the spiritual realm. I'm supposed to be able to produce Christians. My job is to take people, more and more I'm finding out, my job is to take those who have a call into leadership and to pour into them. And meanwhile, while I'm pouring into leaders, I'm having them in return pour out to more people. As this church grows back to where we were and past it, and we're seeing visitors, we're seeing people coming in and saying, so I believe the first of the year we were sitting here, one of the words of the Lord that came to me was, 2014 is going to be a year of jubilee. I believe God's going to start paying back debt that, that the enemy has stolen from the church. Amen. And not just individually, not just collectively, but individually too. Amen. How many of you have the enemy steal from you? I believe he's going to be ready. I think God's going to start making him, when he makes him pay it back, it's more than dollar on dollar. Hello. Read your Bible. Amen. He makes him pay back ten times. Say amen. amen. So whatever is taken from you, whether it's been joy, peace, finances, or whatever it is, I believe you're going to start finding that coming back at you. Those of you that have struggled and had hearts broken and joy taken away from you, whatever the situation is, I believe you're going to find an extreme amount of joy start pouring out in 2014. But with that, God's had me preaching some messages about the world systems, about what God's trying to do in the church, about love. And last week, I, I've been preaching so hard that God says, remind them that I love them. Just remind them, you know, that you've been preaching this and that, and, but remind them everything I do is in love. It's hard to it's hard to take that, saints. That book I'm been reading, I'm going to start preaching at the first of the year sometime on the secret place, the secret of the secret place. I've been reading it. I'm on chapter 51 for the third time, and it, it's talking about going through your trials and your battles. And but part of the thing is. He talks about Joseph, and we've preached Joseph here for a long while. We did a whole series on Joseph here. So I believe we're called to be a Joseph ministry and help supply food and all that around this city, and we do. We help anybody who comes in here and ask, Missy somehow finds something to give them. And a lot of times it's come out of her and Bill's pocket, but they always find something to give somebody. Amen. That, and, and, and that's that's where the church is supposed to be. But every time... This, this author really took a different turn on this chapter. And, I, and I'm not preaching. I'm just going to throw this out and then get to what I want to preach. Every time Job was in a situation, he was crying out to God. God said, I'm going to promote you. 
And when he promoted him, he put him into a deeper situation. First time he says, okay, you ready for a promotion? Uh, and he made him, and he imprisoned him and sold him into slavery. And, and what did Joseph do? He became the head of the household of slavery. He, he produced, he, he uh, uh, what's the word, uh, uh, excelled in that place where he was. So, so what he did, he made him the head of that. And then, then, of course, Joseph stood in righteousness and holiness again, even after Potiphar's wife came after him. And he's crying out to God, what am I to do now? God said, well, I'm going to promote you. And Joseph probably went, <laughs> And he took him, and what he, did, he took him out of that place and put him in prison. Then you know the rest of the story. He ended up being the only, the only person who was over him in all of Egypt was Pharaoh. Amen? Joseph became number two man in all of Israel. I mean, all of Egypt and Israel. He, by one time, the food, the, 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 the famine had all of Israel came into Egypt. That's how they became enslaved, by the way. They came into Egypt, and they saw that the Israelites were multiplying faster than the Egyptians were, so they decided to en en enslave them and imprison them. Saints, if you don't see that going on right now in the church, you got to, you're blind. The world is overtaking the church because they're not afraid to be boisterous. Come on, boy, you're also looking like a cast in a hailstorm. You're all sitting there looking at me like so pious. The, vo the church is losing its voice. We backed down from our first defeat was prayer in school. Our second defeat was abortion. I have no problem with the abortion protesting. I have no problem whatsoever with it. But you better have an alternative for them little girls. A lot of those girls are going in there because their parents are putting them in there. They, they won't let them either abort that child or you can't live here, and they don't have a choice. My, my thing, and I've come out of the churches I've been involved in, and we're looking hard here to start this thing, is to offer a home. Then, we'll, then I'll go out and say, let's stand in front of an abortion center. But we better, have an, we better have an alternative for them young ladies first. To me, if we just stand out there, and again, please don't get me wrong. Thank God we got to speak for life. I vote that way. I don't vote. I, I am a registered Republican, like 90% of the Pentecostals in the world are. But I don't vote Republican because I'm Republican. I vote when it gets down to it. I mean, honestly, it was a flip of a coin over the last presidential election. That may sound funny to you. I wasn't sure if I wanted a Mormon in there or not. But it was no flip when that man believed in life. And the other one did not. That's what I took it on. I made people know all life is given by God. Come on. If you ever, anybody ever told you you were an accident, they lied to you. Doesn't the Bible say he knew you before he placed you in your mother's womb? You were no accident. Amen? You all look, come on now, somebody gets happy. I'm not yelling at you. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit. And, I, and those of you that are visiting, I'm sorry that I had to sit down until God finishes my arthritis healing. If I don't sit down, I'll fall because my back spasms up on me. So I don't sit because I'm lazy. I sit because I'm in pain. And God's slowly taking that away from me. Paul, thank you for that little note. I'm going to get that stuff. My wife's looking, going to get it next time I get paid. And we're going to thank you. I, I really do appreciate that. Thank you very much. Uh, Brother Wayne's always bringing me stuff. Half the time my doctors tell me I can't take it, and i got to give it back to him. But <laughs> Only because it counteracts with some of the meds I'm on there saying and all that stuff. But I, 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 we found out the other day when I went to the uh, kidney doctor, you know, my potassium's been crashing. They found out. How many people remember I told you these meds are killing me? They are. One of the meds I'm on is just, as it sucks potassium out of your body, amen? And my doctor couldn't figure out why my potassium was low. The uh, kidney doctor looked at this, well, you can't take this anymore. I blocked, I blocked about 85% of your potassium. Wow. And you're taking 80 milligrams of potassium a day, and you're eating all them, them nuts, like you say, and you're eating them bananas every morning. We should be worried about high potassium, not low. So 
so now we're, we're, we're off that medication. I feel pretty good. Now my sugar's crashing. And, and he says to me, so stop taking so much potassium. <laughs> so, uh, so pray for me when I'm going to lay hands on doctors. Amen. Uh, make sure it's spiritually and not spiritual conflict-wise. Amen. But that's what I want to talk to you today about. i got like six points here I want to talk to you about spiritual conflicts. How many people know we are all going to go through them? I said it earlier today, if you don't have a testimony, God's going to give you a test to give you a testimony. The awesome thing is, saints, how many of you have ever heard the statement, I'm, I, I'm, had, I'm on a mountaintop experience? Mountaintop experience means, it means you've just been close to God or something. And in the mountaintop experience, have any of you ever been to the top of a high mountain? How much life do you see up there? Not much, is it? Where's all the life? What do you consider your valley experiences? Hello. Look at your neighbor and go, are you my trial? <laughs> are you my next trial waiting to happen? <laughs> Very easily could be, amen? But God wants you to understand this. And, and the first one, uh, turn to Romans. Uh, they're going to put it up here. Uh, I like this, and I also hate it. Bring your Bible to church. Amen. Turn your telephone off, because I don't know if you're looking at the scores or, or, or reading your Bible. Amen. But bring a paper Bible to church. I know Pastor Caleb doesn't look at scores. Amen. But bring your Bible to church and get ready and read along with it. I mark my, it's okay to write in your Bible. If you're, uh, uh, what's a, what was Pastor Dave? Nazarene, I know that's a sin. Pastor Dave tells me the Nazarenes don't believe in writing their Bibles. One time I threw my Bible down the ground. Pastor Dave now pastors the Rock Church of Largo. But I threw my Bible on the ground because I said, when the Bible says, when all else fails, stand on the word. And I threw mine on the ground, stood on it. He went, because <gasps> the Nazarene church, that was a no-no, Amen. But I believe when all else fails, first in the natural, then the spiritual. Amen. So I'm going to stand on my Bible and say, God, you said. <laughs> Put it on my, on my heel into it if I got to. Amen. But at times I just, I couldn't get it, so I just wanted to engulf it. <sighs> Whatever it took to get it in me. Amen. And obviously I've eaten a lot of it. Come on, saints. So, I mean, Romans 7.3 says this. It's, it's, number, number one, it's called an inward battle. Do you know most of your spiritual battles, your spiritual conflicts are going to start there? There's a war going on in there. He said, but I see another law in my members. That word law there, if you look it up into the uh, uh, E-sword and all that, it says that is the law of Moses in my, in my members. It's warring against the law of my mind, your understanding. And it's bringing me into the captivity of the law of sin which is in my members. How many people know you were born from sin? Come on. So what we are, so right from the get-go, saints, as we grow older, there must be that born-again experience. That's why Jesus didn't say it was a suggestion. He said you must be born again. It's one of the only musts Jesus puts in, in, in any, anything he says. You must be born again. That old member, that old Moses law, that old sinful nature in you must die. You must be fresh anew and born afresh and anew to allow Christ to flow through you. Say amen. That was weak. A amen, Pat. Go get my hands. I'm going to clap myself on the back here in a minute. But you, you've got... I got I'm going to need this today. I can see it coming. In case you don't know what this is, you'll hear it. Uh-oh. I, I got my own cheering box, amen? And, and, and look, in case I need one of these, I got one of these. Praise the Lord. Preach it, Pastor. I mean, I got it all up here just in case I need them, amen? And I got a feeling today you're all tired, so I'm going to put them up here. You know, it's good to shout to the preacher once in a while. 
the more you show I'm hitting something, the better the preaching gets. It really is. I'm not a teacher. Teachers could care less whether you respond back. I'm a preacher. Thank you. Preacher needs that once in a while. And I miss my Jeremy's little boy. All I had to say was, give me an amen. He'd go, amen! I didn't care if he knew what I was talking about or not. It pumps you. Come on. I don't know how children ministers do it. I'm very sorry to hear children amen. But I, I, I'll make them have, hold a sign and say, you can extra lollipop if, you hang, if you're hanging up. You know, amen, amen, amen. <laughs> I'm not a teacher. I'm a preacher. So don't be afraid to shout back at me. There's a guy named Len Howes used to say this all the time. Len Howes is out of West Virginia, preacher. He goes, don't shout me down because I'm preaching good. <laughs> In other words, give me an amen. That's a country way of saying, give me an amen. Thank you. But I see another law in my I'm joking around with you guys. Warring against the law of my understanding. And it bringing me into captivity. It's causing me to be bound up. That's the reason those songs meant so much to me. I knew what my opening scripture was. It's causing me to be brought into captivity. When you start allowing your cardinal self to speak to your mind, instead of like Paul says, you speak to your cardinal self. You say self I've come today to worship the Lord. Well, I don't care how much you growl belly. I don't care how sleepy I get. I'm going to worship God today. This is what I came to the house of God for. God, not Missy, not Pastor, didn't set a table before you. God placed a table before you and said, I've come today to feed you words of life and if you don't get a little bit excited about it, stay home. I'm not even trying to be smart with that. Watch me on TV then. Because we come together today, I believe Sunday morning services should be celebration time. We should come together to celebrate. The more you celebrate, you see what happens during praise and worship? The prophetic starts flowing. I don't know whether you guys realize that or not. I was waiting for somebody, Katie, when you were playing on the pastor, when you were playing on the drums, for somebody to interpret. Because there was a sound coming out that was saying something. And they both had the sound. They both had the word. And it was amazing to me. So Marcy said the one thing, and I got up and shared something. And then when, when, when uh, 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 what's your name, Charlie got up behind you and started saying about being set free, those drums were talking today. Okay, says, thank God, because he wore him out. He needs a nap, amen? Every once in a while, shaky. Make sure he's awake back there. Number two, spiritual weapons. Number two, the spiritual conflicts. How many people know he gives you spiritual weapons? 2 Corinthians 10, 14. You all know this scripture. The weapons of our warfare are not, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold. The word cardinal there means fleshly or temporary. That word cardinal, that means it's only for a season. So if our weapons of warfare are not seasonal, they're not temporary. Aren't you glad that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday as he is today? And he will be for generations to come if the Lord tarries. He's come with the same weaponry. Your praise is one of the greatest weapons you can have. And the word of God. And if we stop singing songs that don't, if we sing songs rather, that don't produce the word, go against the word, we don't sing it long here. I don't like every song we sing. I don't like the beats of all of them. That's fine. I love to hear Brother George rap, but I'm not a rap person. You know, I just rap and, and hip hop ain't my bag. But I love to hear Brother George. My favorite one, of course. What's my favorite rap song he does? The names. I love it when George when when he raps the names of God. And, you know, but so I'm not a real rap. Kids love it as long as it's got. He sang one song. And put one verse in there one time, and I went, uh, uh, 
And he only sang it one time that I know of. He sang it, I might sing it in other places, but not while pastors are around. I went to him afterwards and said, you can't sing that verse no more. Remember that? And he, he, he changed it. He changed it. He found another word to, put, to make the meaning come across. It wasn't a curse word, but it was borderline. Amen. <laughs> and he changed it. And it's important that we keep the things of God world, unworldly and keep it spiritual. Your weapons are to pull down strongholds. How many people know what pulls down strongholds? What's break, what breaks yokes? Say it again, Pastor. The anointing is what crushes yokes. You can take hammers all day long. You can take whatever you have all day long. Unless there's an anointing on it. How do you get anointed? Just getting in his presence. I don't have any secrets for it. Except the secret place with God. I know, I, and I told you this before, when I'm under the anointing, I can dance, I can do these things, and I was read my Bible, and Peter and these guys stayed in this, and I'm learning to get to the place where I'm not leaving the anointing off me. I'm learning to get, I, I'm not there, my wife, my wife was here, she'd be the first one shouting amen right now, but I'm not there all the time, but I'm working towards that. My goal is to be like Peter and these guys. They walked down the street and their shadow fell on the people and people were healed. Their shadow had nothing to do with it. That wasn't their weapon, amen? It was the Spirit of God that came off of them. That was their weaponry. It's not what we can do. Hey, if you, know, you can go out and buy all the M16s you want to, all, all the gun you want to, all the other things you want to. The minute the government stops selling you the, the, the ammo, it ain't going to be any good. And then you're going to run around picking up shell casings and packing them yourself with bird seeds. They're going to take something taking away BBs away from the people. But God has given you something that's inward, that should shine outward. Are you all with me? Your weapon is not cardinal. It's not flesh. It's not temporary. It is Christ forever. Number three, it's invisible foes. How many people know you can't always see the enemy for the enemy? You know, one of the biggest battles in Vietnam was they didn't know who the enemy was. They would go into a little village one time and they'd be greeted with, with open arms. But at night, the villagers became, well, they, they called them gooks because they weren't military. But they would come and, and start killing people, and, and military guys, in their sleep at night. Little kids come running up to me asking for chocolate bars with bombs attached to me, blow them up. That's why there were, there, there were so many times they took the, that's how our military went and went in and wiped whole villages out when they went into Vietnam. They had to because they come running at them and they didn't know which, who was the enemy and who was not the enemy. They didn't have, sometimes they, didn't have, they come running up with pitchforks. Are they going to stab me with it or are they just too glad to see me? Come on. They didn't understand. How many people know the enemy comes at you that way? Some, that's why I said to you earlier, turn around and see the person next to you. They could be your next trial. Not that they're Satan's enemy. Listen, the Holy Spirit no sooner came out of my mouth, spoke into my ear just then and said, there's not a one of you in this room that has been used by Satan or one of his demons since you've been saved. Not willingly. No one's ever lost their temper since they've been saved. No one's ever said mean things to their spouse. You two can say amen to that, right? <laughs> you can say amen. We haven't yet, right? It's coming. <laughs> they got married last weekend because you don't know that. But, uh, invisible foes. Ephesians 6, 12 says this, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world and against wicked, wickedness in high places. That word ruler there literally means Satan. It means your battle's not against Satan of the darkness of this world. 
If you look it up in the Strong's, that's what it's going to say under the Strong's meaning. It literally means your battle's not against Satan. How many people know, and not many of us in this room, or any of us at all, have probably battled Satan personally? But one of his little imps. You all understand that? I don't know, some of you might have, I mean, uh, but most of us have not. We, we are, uh, most of our calls aren't that big. I don't, I don't, that's your Smith's Wiggleworth in hiding here. Most of our calls aren't big enough for Satan himself to show up against you. But, it's, but he's got his principality. You know, his principality is a sign. If you read your Bible, this is all scriptural, to Arius. One of the ones here, saints, by the way, is Jezebel. Why do you think there's so many strip joints and all in Tampa? Lap dances and all that going on every, every day and all that in this area. Jezebel spirits here. Why do you think so many pastors fall from that, male or female, fall from that? That's why I don't never travel without somebody going with me. If my wife can't go with me, I'm not allowing that thing, place, to do that. I won't travel anymore unless I have somebody going with me. Uh, I would, I, 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 they say, you taking a bodyguard? Yeah, but not the way you describe it. I'm taking one to make sure that I don't find myself in that predicament, even if I don't do anything, for that, that spirit to come back and say that I did do it. So I want to witness with me. You all with me? I won't. I very seldom will bring women in here to counsel unless it's one of the church members here, without Missy or Tricia or somebody being here with me. I won't do it. I won't take that chance to allow that that lying spirit to bring this house down because I fell. Most houses fall when a pastor falls. By the way. And that's why I'm saying that. And I'm not going to allow that thing to happen. I, I don't. I don't have any desire. I got the prettiest wife in the church. Amen. But so I don't. Have, I don't have that desire. <laughs> Number four, your battle. So you got to. In other words, saints, you've got to be ready because you never know what the enemy's going to come after you, or who he's going to come after you with. You don't know what he's going to come after you with. And you don't know who he's going to come after you with. My wife's not here, so I can tell you this. Not about her. I'm not going to talk about her. You know, say, shh. I, one of the greatest movies, you know, some of you have already heard, no, I say this, to watch, to see how Satan works, is Al Pacino's movie, The Devil's Advocate. Now, I've only seen it on television. I don't, so don't go renting it. I understand the scenes they show on television, they go completely n nude on the on the CD. On TV, they didn't, so there's a lot of nudity in the movie, so I'm not telling you to go home and watch pornography. I'm not, I'm not your hidden shadow here, amen, okay? <laughs> but it is, because the enemy comes after this young lawyer, and he kept beating him and beating him and beating him, which is supposed to be his spawn of Satan. And the kid beats him ends up beating him in this victory. He has a victory over him in this area. And, uh, the movie shows he shoots himself, and next thing you know, he's splashing water on his face in the same men's room where he went in in the beginning, and the whole thing must have been like a, a dream or something in his head. But anyhow, he defeated him in that thing. And as he was going down the steps, his buddy kept saying to him, but you won again. You've never lost. He said, you're the best. And he stopped. He's got his wife by the hand, who he thought was murdered and all this stuff. He's got he turns around and he goes, you know, I just might be the best. And he came after him with all kind of stuff, with uh, all that. And, and as, as he walked down, his friend's face turned into Al Pacino's face, which was supposed to be Satan. And he went, pride, pride. That should have been the weapon I used in the first place. So many people know you'll defeat him on A, but your next trial is coming. My job, according to the book of Ephesians, which is right above this, is to train and equip you to do the work of the ministry. And if I don't put the right weaponry in your hands, I haven't provided you to do this. To understand that Satan doesn't care a flip nickel about you. He don't care about you. You don't think 
I'm a good, these people that make jokes saying, well, I don't want to go to heaven anyhow because there ain't no beer in heaven. When they get, when they get to hell, they're going to be awful thirsty. My Bible shows the person just wants a one drop of water on his tongue. I don't want to go to heaven. Ain't none of my friends going to be there. Well, if they know me, I'm going to be in heaven. Amen. They make fun of it now, but the day's going to come, saints. So don't think he cares anything about you because he does it. But God's going to give you every trial, every battle, and allow some of them are going to come from God. If you don't believe it, I'll give you a message on the camels are coming to prove it to you. Everything he can do, God's going to allow it to happen to you to make sure you understand the principles of the kingdom of God. Because if you think you got it all, Brother Tim quotes scripture like the Son of God. But if he thinks he's got it all, God, will, Satan will destroy him. If he doesn't stay plugged into the source, the Father. I'm not, am I pre preaching a little fear factor here? I hope so. I'm tired of the gospel not being preached. There's, there is a hell and there is an enemy that wants you dead. He doesn't want you alive because you're in, you are fear to him that you might lead the next one to Jesus Christ that might bring back Jesus Christ. And until you understand, if it takes you to go through a little bit of sorrow to get you to the place that you're going to find yourself on the knees crying out to God, and God's going to allow that sorrow in your life. He won't let it kill you. Job. But he'll bring a little sorrow, a little hurt. He'll allow it to come. Some of it he brings, not much. Read your Bible. Go and read the story of uh, Abraham and Isaac and all. And Sarah, what's her name? Sarah? And God sent this servant out. That's the story about the camels are coming, huh? I got a message. I'll give you a tape if you want to hear it. Camels are coming. Camels means burdens and heavy labor. They came for Sarah. I don't want to preach that because I've got to go on that house tape for days. But, he, but he's going to allow that to come into your life to bring you to a place. Church of America. I'm going to beat Tim up today. Look. <laughs> Rise up. Or, or rise down, should I say. Start filling this house on prayer night. Fill your house with praise and worship instead of the idiot box. Anybody can use a remote control. They teach monkeys to do that. I ain't seen a monkey yet bow his head in prayer. telling you right now it's our there is a burden on this generation to keep America free pastor that's not fair no it's not but it's but the way the country's going right now it's just Number four. Takes you right into number four. I want to produce young soldiers enlisted. First Timothy 1.18 says this. Fight the good fight of faith. And I'm sorry. This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy. <laughs> One I'm beating on you. According to the prophecies which went before you that thou by them might war a good welfare. Now, I, except our visitors here today, there's not a person in this room who hadn't got a prophecy in this house. 
if not from me, from one of the other prophets that have come through here. We bring the prophets in a lot. Pastor Lou and Pastor Gwen will be here uh, for our convention in April. And you know they move in the prophetic. Uh, Capuccio and Jim, pa- Pastor Phil Capuccio and Jim Cacuzzo want to come down. Brother Vinny wants to come down. Just go, he said, just go fishing. He said, well, go fishing Friday and Saturday in the waters, and I'll come in your church Sunday and do some fishing. So God sends the prophets here a lot. The word of the Lord for you isn't that it, the prophecies isn't that you can have something to boast about. It's to give you something that you know you can fight with. When your when your weapon is empty, quotes your prophecy to God. What God said, you're going to be. Hello, y'all with me? You believe that, or am I am I, am I am I talking to Rock Church here? This church Pentecostal, or we did we somehow slip over to a Nazarene church here? Tim, throw your Bible and stand. Throw your Bible down, stand on. Let's see what happens. No, I'm serious. I want to make sure. Okay. We want to make sure we didn't we didn't slip away here or something. <laughs> But your prophecy is to hold you steadfast. If you got words from God and you're ill and you find yourself in those kind of things and you ain't fulfilled the word yet, you ain't going nowhere yet. Unless you ain't trying to fulfill it. And God will take it away from you. Hello. Isn't that, isn't that written in the Bible? Where five used to five, he gave them five. Two used to two, they gave them two. One didn't use the one he took it away and gave it to the one that had ten. I tell people all the time, anybody here knows how to play a saxophone. When you're not playing one, I just want you to come up around me. <laughs> and let God take that off of you and give it to me. I can't, I have a hard time playing a radio, much less an instrument. And I love music so much. And I love, I used to dance on a TV show called Kirby Scott out of Baltimore. It's like, it's like, it's like American Bands. You remember the Kirby Scott show? I used to dance on a Kirby Scott show all the time, every Saturday morning. And I could dance. But I can't, I, I start singing around here. Those of you that are visiting, I start singing around here. The church go, ugh. Oh. The Marcy called. But I guarantee you, you'll you'll find yourself fighting a good fight, which is the next one. Fighting a faith, good faith. You all with me? Oh, it's after 12 o'clock. Let me finish up. Fighting a faith. First Timothy 6, 12 says, fight the good fight. Fight a... I'm trying to go too fast. Think, Brian. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of, of a cardinal life. Therefore thou art also called and has possessed a good profession before many went witnesses. Fight the good fight of faith. Saints, faith isn't something that just grows. You gotta exercise it. You gotta put something to it. Faith is an action word. You gotta put something with it to create it. Faith is one of those words they talk about going to the gym and where there's no there's no uh pain there's no gain how many people know i i i have failed many 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 times of praying for people i uh what's his name uh, oral roberts made the statement once that he was called to be a faith healer Oral, you know and he was anybody knows oral roberts ministry he was a faith healer and he went years he was taught he traveled with other people he laid hands on people four years he prayed for nobody and nobody ever got healed and he cried out to god are you sure he said the burden was in his heart to see somebody get healed. Finally, like the, the start of the fourth year, the fifth year, whatever hour it was, he prayed for somebody and God healed him. He knew he healed him because he grew a leg. There was nothing. The guy was cut off from the knee down. It wasn't one of these where he just needed a little adjustment, you know. They stopped making a leg grow, and only thing was a little bit of adjustment the way he sat. Make his leg grow. Ooh, look, it grew. 
wasn't one of those things. I like the way Pastor Gwen and all of them pray for that. They adjust that. They know it's not growing. But this guy had no leg. It was cut off. And he asked Oral, he said, you're a faith healer. Believe God for a leg for me. I've been asking God for it for years. And Oral said, you know what? This might just be the one. And he prayed. And the guy went, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And all of a sudden, a, a leg popped out. And there was nothing down there. Then a foot came out of it in front of thousand saints. It wasn't something that was hidden up, and he pushed a button and slid it out either. It was real. And what that did for Oral was just as much as it did for the man that grew the leg. When we had our first cancer here, on here I jumped for joy. God healed cancer. Then we had our second, and our third, then our 45th, then our 46th, and our 47th, and our 55th, and our 56th. I believe that's where we're at right now. 56 cancer healings. See, I, I was really hurt. Go oh, ahead, give God glory. I was really hurt when he didn't heal Pastor Gwen's dad. When she texted me and told me he died, I went right into my office. And I said, God, why not? I'm God, and you're not. That's all my answer was. So I sat there for about an hour, pouting. God said, you got anything else to say? About an hour later, God said, I said right, just, I'm talking to you. I don't know how you talk to God, but I talk to God that way. God asked me, you got anything else to say? I said, I love you. Said, That's what I want. Is that going to stop me from healing for the next cancer victim? Praying for the next cancer victim? No, it's not. I don't know why. My mom was 56 years old when she went to be with heaven. I argued this with God. Why, God? 56 years old, why? That three years later, I'm ministering somewhere. And in the midst of it, God said, you asked me a question a while back. Why did your mother die? He said, it's your next scripture. I read my next scripture, and it says this. I give no man more or allow a man to, any more than he can ever handle. What your mother was about to go through with her body and her health would have been more than she could handle. And she loved me enough that I decided to bring her home instead. Three years it took to get that answer. Now, behind that, I had to finish a message. To, to stop. And all of a sudden, I'm, I'm up there crying my eyes out. <laughs> God loves you. <laughs> and that's the message I was preaching. I started out having the whole church saying, Jesus loves me. This I know. I'm talking about the love of Jesus and how much he loves us. And God speaks that to me right in the middle of it. Don't forget, he'll never give you more than you can handle. I was supposed, I was supposed to say it that way. Yeah, that's a promise of God, how much he loves us. Instead, he hit me with that right in that message. And until I left that and was sitting in a restaurant with the pastor of the church I was preaching at, did the reality hit me how much what he did for me at that pulpit was the very message I was preaching. I might not have been able to handle that statement he gave me three years prior. It might have been more than I could handle for God to make that statement to me. But three years later, it hit me like lightning. How much God loved us. You know, that saint, your, your, spirit, your spiritual weapons are a lot greater than you think they are. a good faith. Number six, and I got three scriptures under six, and we'll go home. And I'll, I'll, and I'll try to sit here and tell. It demands your entire consecration. You all with me? 
It demands your whole being. If you are going to be in spiritual conflict, it starts demanding your whole being. No man warreth entangled himself. This is 2 Timothy 2.4. No man that warreth entangled himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him that have chosen him to be a soldier. No man can be in war entangles himself with this life. See, saints, if you are really bought and paid for, and you've really committed yourself, you know, when you're in the military, what do they, what, they might know what they call you when you first, they don't call it private and all that stuff, but what they hand you, you, and they tell you that you are, it's called a GI. Anybody know what GI stands for? Say it loud. You don't belong to yourself for the next elect for next years that you were signed up for. You belong to the United States government. You're a government issue. We can use the same initials. How many of us know we're GIs? God issue, amen. Again, you're not an accident. You're here for this season because God needed you and your personality on the earth and your call on the earth at this time. You cannot let the enemy steal you from the body of Christ. And that's what he'll do. He'll take people that have a great call in their life and they'll make sure they get beat up and they get hurt and all those kind of things. They'll make sure that, that happens to them. Why? So that they will be unaffected because of their, for their call. I've watched people leave this house because they can't take the heat when God's purifying them. They don't want it. I got a gift, and it needs to be cleaned up a little bit. Saints, I came here. I came out of a rock church that was 2,800 people. Then I came out of the second rock church, the mother rock church, that was 10,000 people. I had 750 elders and deacons directly under me. That's bigger than most churches in America. And I came down here thinking, I'm going to set this place on fire! For one year, it was just me and Kim. <laughs> Nobody came to any of my church services. And I remember, I remember having pity parties, calling Bishop, wanting to leave, wanting to come back home. And Bishop, being Puerto Rican from New York, would talk to me in Oriental accent. No ticky, no laundry. All that stuff. And he'd say all that thing. Yeah. All, all different things to me. He wouldn't let me come home. And he finally would say to me a couple of I would call him. I, I only did it two or three times. And I, every time he said, did God send you or did you go? Did God sent me. If God, and so God made a mistake. You can come home. Just admit to me that God made a mistake. You ever come to my office and told me God made a mistake out of your life? You're not a mistake. The enemy will hinder your call. He knows which one I'm pointing to. He'll hinder your call. He'll try to stop you in your tracks because you're a threat to him. If you got the Holy Ghost and you're born again, I don't care what you're going through. You hear me? You hear me? It's John, right? You hear me? I don't care what you're going through. The more I, the more I see you in here, you have got a call. I'm not sure what it is in the things of God. I don't know if it's ministerial, pastoral, congregate. I don't know what it is. And the enemy doesn't want you. You're a threat to him. You hear me? I know the first word I had. What? No, was, I met with, with Dave, right? Was, but I feel. I feel feel i feel, the more i see you the greater i see there's a call in your life and even this illness is felt calls you to back up and wonder and god says stop wondering son the call goes forward this is going to strengthen you brother and you're going to minister to people and you are now 
I, I, I just got a gut feeling you are now in the place you're going to for treatments. Uh, they're, they're, people are starting to see the Christ come through you. But the more I see you here, the greater I see the presence of God all over you. And God's going to use you, brother, in the midst of this trial. And you're going to come out of this thing with shout. with a, You know, I believe the greatest praise you can give God is to sing hallelujah. And you're going to run out of this thing. You're going to run out of this thing too, brother. You ain't walking out of it. You're going to run out of this thing shouting hallelujah, says the Lord. Because he wants, that's what he wants to do. He wants to destroy you. Number the next scripture is Hebrews ten thirty. I'm so late. I'm sorry, guys. Blame it on Tom. Praise and worship went too long. But call to remembrance the former days in which you were illuminated, and you endured a great fight of affliction. Sometimes we got to go back to our youth a little bit. Come on. How many of you, when you partied, you partied hard? That's somebody that partied hard. Amen. Come on. Then stop being a wimp for the kingdom. And don't come into church thinking this ain't supposed to be a party. You're in God's house, saints. And he's set a table for us. In the presence, the Bible says, of our enemy. And you're going to sit around being wimpy? This is your chance to dance a little bit in front of your enemy. Yeah, I may have arthritis and I may have it in my hips, but I'm going to dance just every once in a while. I got so bad in my shoulder that the pain's been making me black out. It really has. But I'm going to lift my hands once in a while, and I'm going to shout once in a while, and I'm going to hit Tim every once in a while when he needs it. Amen. I'm going to do what needs to be done because I'm not a whip for the kingdom of God. I've turned every cheek I can turn. There ain't no more to turn. Come on, church. It's time to, hurt you then. Time to move on. I just twisted my ankle a little bit with that last kick. But who cares? I tore my paper even on that one. I hit you hard that time. <laughs> paper covers rock, right? <laughs> Revelation 12, 17 says this, And the dragon which wrought with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keeps the commandments of God, and had the testimony. Of who? Stand to your feet. Come on, somebody give the Lord a shout. Put some music on it, stands. Come on, church, let me tell you. I want to pray for those who got to go out of town and all that. So if you need to go out of town, come on up here. I want to pray for you. Anybody here that's not born again? If I've just shaken you up with a message that you have no idea what I'm talking about, and you're not walking right with God, and you know you're not walking with God, come over here and stand where I, or by where I sit. I want to pray for you. Don't be shy. My God, don't be shy. Not at this time in your life. Because tomorrow's not promised to you. I'm running out of breath already up here. Tomorrow's not promised to you. I'm glad my elder didn't go over there and he came over here instead. That's my, my head elder. I'm glad he went that way. Amen. Sh shook me up. <laughs> you have got the weaponry you need. Stop letting the enemy tell you that you're done. You all with me? You're not done. You're not done. You've got giftings. The body of Christ needs. If we, this, I believe this. The reason I preach this way is I want America back on its pins. And I need each and every person that has their call to help me get there. I can't do it alone. 
no one person can do it alone. It's going to take the church, Brother Caleb. It's going to take your giftings, my giftings, your wife's giftings. Everybody's giftings are here. It's to move this church. You're here for a purpose. Well, I don't know what that purpose is. Yeah, let me tell you, can I tell you what your purpose is? If you don't know what your purpose you know what your purpose is? Just to worship. If nothing else at all, you were created for that. You're created so the rocks won't cry out anymore. Amen? Any leadership left that's not going out of town, can you help me out here? Can you help me out here and let's lay hands on this bunch? Father, thank you. Father, as they get ready to go up with grandbabies and babies to come. Oh, no, I was traveling up to see DJ. Father, cause the anointing to be on their lives. Father, let, let DJ be as free as we are on the outside, Lord. God, just bless these two, God, and just be with them as they travel up to see our brother who's in prison, literally. Lord God, but I know his spirit, man, is free. And God, let there be rejoicing in that jail when they go in there, Father. In the name of Jesus, we send them up with a blessing. Let a guard be touched that they share and laugh in that place, Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, sister, we get ready to travel and go see her, her grandbaby in the belly, Lord God, and, <laughs> and all those things, Father. Just bless her. Give her travel safety and mercy, Father. Just be with her. God, and the people that she's with and sits next to and all that, Father, let them see Christ. Let them see Jesus Christ, Father. Just let her time be well with her family. Let there not be the bickering and the things that go on with family, Father, but let there be joy and rejoicing. And I give her thanks. Let her, let her children remember that this is the mom and they're the children, Lord. In Jesus' name. Father, I thank you right now. Bless these two and their children, God, when they go up to see family and in-laws and, and, and all the good times. Father, even when he goes in to see DJ too, Lord God, I just had such a blessing. God, DJ sent a word reminding him that there's a football game on Thanksgiving morning too. God. Thank you, Father. Uh, whoever's playing Detroit, win. Amen. But uh, <clears throat> <Come on. laughs> we release him and send them off right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of, let, let Detroit lose today, at least, Lord. Amen. Uh, they play the Bucks to stay. Uh, Father, thank you right now. Touch them, Lord. Touch this couple, Father, when they go on this cruise. Let it just be a time of relaxation. Father, just let the Father, they're going on the biggest ship that they have, Lord God. God, and I just ask God that this city, God, that I hope they get to see most of it, Lord. And let them take lots and lots of pictures, Lord. And we may split, that we may be on that cruise with them. Now, Father, we just ask you to use them, God, and where whoever they sit with at dinner, let them know. Let this couple, I know, here, no doubt about it, but let them know about <laughs> Jesus, Lord. Now, use them mightily, Father. Not overbearingly, but mightily. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And my son from his mom, his mom, Lord, is not really a son, but a spiritual son. He's like a grandson to me in the natural. But Father, I just thank you, God, for his heart. And, uh, I'm tired of praying this boy out here. God, just you send him out. You send him away again. God, just give him travel, safety, and mercy. Bless him as he travels, Father. Let him use wisdom and not to try to drive all 19 hours without a rest, Lord. God, and I thank you for him. I thank you, God, that his family is going to enjoy their Thanksgiving together today, Lord. And just be with him, and we give you the thanks and the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. Huh. Thanksgiving? Yeah. Where are you going? Dad? I'm dad? I'll try to excuse that every day. No, she won't. Thank you, Father. Father, again, family time. I beloved family, Lord, and I thank you, God, that family gets together on these holidays. God, and let there just be, I know where they're going to be singing and rejoicing going on, Father. Amen. It's every year they get up. That's part of their Thanksgiving. I believe they've got to sing for their meal. Amen. <laughs> now, Father, we send them up there, Father, and we ask you to bless them and be with them, Lord, and we give you the thanks and the glory so you give them travel, safety, and mercy. 
And let this pastor's heart come out of this young man, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come on, Lord. Let's give, give, give the Lord a shout. Amen. Amen. Did I miss anybody? Did I pray for everybody? I didn't miss nobody there, did I? Yes. Yeah, we sent that prayer request out yesterday. So, Father, I just ask God that you give that family strength and peace at this time of sorrow. I pray this, uh, according to Christine, that your grandmother knew the Lord. So she's rejoicing, Father, but no matter what, Father, we miss our earthly, we miss our family on the earth. We know we'll be together with them again in glory one time, but Father, we thank you. We thank you, Father, that, you, that you've taken them into your bosom, Lord God, and I just bless us that are left on the earth, God, that we may remember the good times and the good times only. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said, Amen. make sure you love somebody before you leave. Amen. God bless.